Hello and welcome to the second beta release of the Scene Director mod, the latest version, which is 3.2. Um, this time we're going to follow up with what we're calling now the Edit Scene mode, which I hope will, in, well, I believe it will greatly improve the different videos you are able to create. So let's get straight to it. I'll show you three or four demos around it and I'll release the beta demo on the Discord channel later. Right now I'm just showing you the speak uh, feature as well, which we have when recording. So, the new feature we have now is the edit scene. If you go into that without having any recording, let's just remove the recording. It is removed. You will see that you are now uh, controlling the camera and you're slightly away from the actor you were controlling. By moving the mouse, you can pan around, have a look at the different scenes. You can go up and down as well. If you want to move the camera, you use the W, S, A, and D keys. So W to go forward, S to go backwards, D to go sideways, and the same thing uh, with A. If you want to go up and down, you can use the mouse buttons. So this is the right mouse button, we'll then just pan you slowly down and the left button will go um, upwards. If you keep the shift key pressed while you're doing this, you will go much faster. So if you wanna take a run around the block, you can do like this and be back to where you started. So this basic features with controlling camera will be very useful just to finding out the different camera angles, different camera angles you want to use. Uh, and you can even then move the camera while you're actually playing the scene back. So uh, this will then replace the game camera uh, in if you go into director's mode to edit it afterwards. But I think the real power really comes when we see at the other major feature of the edit scene, which is to then basically edit the recordings you have. So let's make a recording here just to show how you can improve the positions when you're going on foot. First, we're just going to show you one more thing. We want to switch the name of this uh, actor to runner so that's a new feature coming here as well so now we want to just run uh, record them we're running around this particular place here I think I'll start again that was a bad start let's do it again as you can see this is a bit quite complicated control mechanisms which is hard to actually get working with the when we're replaying it normally so the first thing you will see when we now go back into the uh, edit mode you will see that if you switch the scene mode to setup you will see all the different recording items and this is actually what the mod has recorded when you were running around and that's all the information it has so when we're trying to play back, it's then going to try to start on the first location, move over to the second location, the third, and so on. And to do that, it has certain criteria it needs to match before it can complete. And this is typically like a distance. So it needs the actor needs to be within a certain distance of this point. So if we check the default playback here, we're going to see that it doesn't really work very well in this situation. Uh, so the active the the carrot act here and the blue one will actually or the carrot one will be the next or the current um recording item that which the actor is trying trying to execute the blue one indicates that it's the nearest one and that's the one you can edit we'll get back to that afterwards so let's try to play the scene standard we see the actor and as you see it's moving quite quickly through the different uh recording items which means that it doesn't really complete the action we intended. If we go back into setup mode, we can now try to adjust this. First thing we see that it, the recording items themselves don't really go in the same pattern as we record it, because they record every once every few hundred milliseconds um, based on the type of action you're doing. So first we need to sort of move these here. And the easiest way to move it is to get so that you're the so that the recording item you want to um, change is turns to blue, then you press spacebar, it turns to red, 
and that means when you now move the camera without the rotation it will then move the recording item so now we see we move this over here we move it a bit further this one we want to move a bit backwards uh, this one we move here let's check if this looks okay we'll move it a bit further um, there's also another way of moving them and that's just clicking on the uh, select key uh, on the current item and it will select the next one and I can press space and do the same thing again oh no I let's see this one I want to have over here let me just see if this looks okay no, I need this one a bit and now in order to get back to the nearest you need to go out of the menu so that you're able to select the nearest one and I want this one a bit closer here and then we'll just take this here and won't do that much so now we move them into a structure which is a bit more what we intended when we were recording this uh, it's still not perfect which we're going to show now how this now reacts when we are playing it back and the issue now is that it completes the items too quickly So now see is running and he's completing it a bit too quickly so it doesn't really run through the motions. And this is caused by this minimal distance. So if you go back here and look at the parameters on this here, you will see that the minimal distance before this is completed is 7, which is quite a long distance, and it checks it every 300 milliseconds. So we want to have this with a much smaller distance, so let's put that into 1.0 and we want to check every 50 milliseconds because if you have a smaller distance you need to check it more often um, it will eventually give up as well if it doesn't come uh, within the minimal distance and I think that's within 25 checks then it will just skip over uh, then we want to do the same thing for the next item we want this to have a minimal distance of 2.0 and we check every 500 every 50 milliseconds approximately then we just repeat and if you keep these distance too low uh, or the check what you will see is that the actor tries to run and then he stops just as he uh, reaches um, one of the recording items and then you have it too closely so let's try it again now when we have a bit different so we see it's getting closer he turns well over there and turns well over there and then he runs so that's looking a lot more what you actually intended to do so let's just run it once more from a different angle so you can see what's happening and if I'm now recording with F1 the camera movements I'm doing as we are looking will then be available in director's uh, mode as well where you edit your movies all right so that's the first thing we want to show is the movement when you're going on foot um, yeah one thing I forgot to do you also have the speech being shown oh, sorry so if we show the markers and we go into a marker we see that this speed is now 2.0 if you want the actor to walk you put it into 1.0 I'm just going to show you that yeah let's just execute the scene now so you can see now he's walking and now he's skipped over the point so now the parameters we had didn't work that well so you best basically need to set that up first the second thing we're going to show is uh, vehicle movement so let's just clone this actor into slot 2, we'll name him uh, car and we'll use just a different mod to spawn a vehicle let's spawn a vehicle which spins a lot okay so one of the challenges we have today with a mod without the edit scene is that the, um, the controls is very accurate when you're recording a vehicle movement but it doesn't really cover 
turns where you need to brake a bit before. So we're going to just try to record a scene where we're driving around the block here and we're going to see how we can edit that afterwards. So, let's record. Alright, so that's the recording. So let's have a view of how this actually is represented when we go into the edit scene. So I'll put the, this one just up. So now we see the different new recording items from this run. We can see we're moving over here, turning around and going back. If we go into one of these first recording items, we see that the different parameters we have here is the, the speed, the minimum distance, and how often you're going to check. And the speed again here is represented uh, as a number and I think the maximum speed of this car is 36. So that will be, yeah, it's hard to sort of translate directly to kilometers, but that's really fast. So then it's going full speed. So it's still going full speed here, full speed here, full speed here, and here it goes half speed. So I have some kind of basic kind of setup where I see if you are getting close to uh, over half of the maximum speed on the last two recording, I set the speed to maximum speed no matter what, because most likely you want to go really, really fast. But for this scene, we will see that this, just, this doesn't work at all. He will basically just skid out here. So let's try to just run the scene first without doing any uh, adjustments. He's running. And as you can see, he just crashes and kills those pedestrians. So it's not the worst driving we've seen, but... And the same thing here, he crashes before he really can reach the destination, because he goes too quickly. So, let's now try to actually adjust this so he doesn't crash. And the best way we can do this here is that we can adjust the speed. So, let's already here say we want to go 25. And on the next one, we really need to reduce it even more. Let's say 18 maybe. And then again, 18. Maybe 20. And now I hope we can start accelerating over here. And 25. Let's try to go full speed here. And then go down again here on, let's say 20. And 20, and 20, and we want to come to a halt over here, so just 5, and then I guess the last one is just 2, and 19, 0.5. Okay, so now we just adjusted the speed, we've done nothing on the actual recording items, so let's see what the effect is. Activating and sealing it. So hopefully our goal is it shouldn't slide out. So it still goes a bit wide, but manages to pull them back in together. And here as well. Here is going really, really slow. So if we try it again, we can we need to make them go even slower over here. But you get the basic idea so I think 15 is usually a good number for and okay so let's try it again we'll use this camera view now I'll just record it as well see it goes perfectly around the curve and you see also here that the distance is quite big so now he has a minimal distance of uh, 17 when he's really uh, speeding and I think it might be smaller if he's yeah so it's 17 so by adjusting that you should be able to do different maneuvers as well so let's just now change it so it goes on the other side and maybe hits the first actor so we go move uh, moving these uh, recordings Yo, just pressing space 
there's also this edit position in the menu item uh, in the menu you can use also to start this editing and make it red um, and if you're using the mouse button while you're editing you can move things up and down so which will be useful for helicopters and things like that okay so let's just see what the difference is now So, really easy now to adjust these um, the recordings. Um, yeah, and then there's I think one last thing I want to show you. Let's then just exit the mode, get a new actor up and running. And the last thing I want to do is just show you um, this um, animations that you now can also change dynamic uh, animations after you recording them so we saw the car coming here let's just record yes for animations you add what's called an animation sequence where you add a few ids from the uh, scene director anim text file uh, there's also a project ongoing now to try to document more metadata about the different animations so that we can have more searchable so you can search for maybe cheering or um, filter by different categories so we're just going to do a cheering animation now which is called 724 which is this animation here so we're just going to record that and we're just going to show that you can actually now change that um, now it's just replaying and it's a really long one. okay so let's just record the scene and i press alt one and then just stop it so now he's just going to run through this animation and while he's doing that we can edit the scene so now we see he's standing here and he has two different recordings uh, the first one is just a walking one which you can see from uh, the title here press here once since these, these are basically on the same location so you can't just use the camera to find the nearest one so you can press the select key here and it shows you now you're in an animation and the animation you have is 724 so if you want to change that to 727 which is a different just do like that and then we can test the scene and see what effect this has So now see he's clapping, he's standing over here. And we can also then, so of course, move him over here. And then we need to move, I guess the animation is good to move as well. And the third one. Now we can move the location we want them to be as well. And now he will walk, I guess, first, oh, oh sorry. Now it's active. This actor will walk over to his starting point and will start viewing the animation. All right. So hope you liked it. Um, there's probably a few more things I can make editable, but it just adds the complexity as well. Um, so please have, test it out. I think what's most important at this point of time is test it out so for crashes, because I'm working with dynamic pointers, and if you do. A mistake there the, the the mod just crashes which means that everything you've done on the scene is just lost so let's make sure there's no cr big bugs which causes crashes in this functionality so hope you enjoy it and please come back with more feedback on where you want the mod to go next my thoughts now is that this edit scene mode works really well to uh, move the camera around and with that functionality, it should also be very easy to start placing props. So I'm guessing that's one of the next things I will focus on. So you can dynamically now add props, like um, if you wanted to create a jump for the car, you would just search up the right prop and place it with the same type of functionality we already have here. So there'd then probably be a props layer in the same way as you have an actor layer. All right, take care, stay tuned.